Okay, hello everyone. We're going to start very soon. Hope you're all well. It's become a lot warmer, <laughs> so that's fantastic. I'm just testing the audio, so just give me a feedback. If the audio is okay, any echoes or so on, I can adjust that just before you start. This news has been put together by my wonderful team. My name is Christian Zasse. For those of you who don't know me, I run Zasse Photo. I basically built up this channel for educational purposes. Audio is good. Thank you, Nicole. I saw that. Uh, so, uh, and now I have a wonderful team of four, which I will mention right at the end. Uh, so we are putting this news together for you to enjoy. So much going on. You know, this is one of these uh, series that just continues. Uh, so lots of updates and quite crazy things going on. Uh, news is coming in as we speak. I just got something from Nicole that will... Any, any news that you know of that you would like us to share, just put it into the comments, please. Just put it into the comments and then we will include it. I just want to greet all of you. Hi, MSO. Hi, Janet, Jackie Porter. I see Granny. Uh, Susie, of course. Sasha, I see. That's great. Wonderful to see you all here. And um, a lot of you have been contributing. Susan North, hi. And thank you for your contributions. They're very valuable. That's the way we live. And uh, don't forget to give us thumbs up. Thumbs ups are important. You know, we know that you like it. As you can see the thumbs up increasing. Please do that. Okay, so I'm going to be quiet now and with you in about 50 seconds. Good evening and welcome my eagle and raptor friends. It's time for raptor and eagle news again here from Vancouver, British Columbia, uh, broadcasting all over the world with my team. We have got interesting updates and uh, certainly a lot happening. So the dramas continue in the nest. It's quite incredible what we've seen so far. So let's jump in straight away. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank my team for putting this together and all of you who have been so kind to contribute. So, first of all, from one nest to another, eggs laid. Yes, Kenai, maybe that's the way you pronounce it, Kenai Eagle Cam, that is in Alaska. If you don't know where the Kenai Eagle Cam is, check them out. First uh, was, so that's been some time ago on the 12th of April, and then we had a second one on the 15th of April. You can see that the activity in Alaska is very similar to what we're having in British Columbia. And hatched, yes, DC-6 has hatched and I have just heard, and I hope I get this information correct, let me just uh, uh, get this. I, I just saw that the news came in for DC, we have a pip in the second egg, DC-7 is on its way, so that's fantastic. So we had the hatch on the 30th and it will probably be the 2nd of May or the 3rd of May where we get wonderful, uh, a, a wonderful update. So that's great. And now Big Bear, oh my goodness, Big Bear is a story. News just coming in also from Lady Hawk just a few minutes ago. I'll update you on that. Stormy is the storm. What a dramatic nest it's been. Fledged overside. Yeah, you call it fledged, fledged. It fledged in the meantime. But what a drama. I'll keep you updated in a second. Broken and non-viable. You may have heard that the American Eagle Foundation in Dollywood, Grant and Glenda, approximately at 7 a.m. Unfortunately, the remaining egg contained an underdeveloped eaglet. You'll see that in a second, which, will not, which did not appear to be alive 
and you will see what happened. And it is amazing. We have the Cora, the drama continues. Dad is still missing, but some other dad is peeping around the corner. The dramas continue. And there is the update for Dollywood. It is with a hearty, uh, with a heavy heart. We are posting a statement in regards to our nesting pair of Grant and Glenda at the American Eagle Foundation in Glolly, Dollywood, no, Dollywood, not Hollywood, Dollywood. Unfortunately, their remaining egg contained an underdeveloped eaglet, which did not appear to be alive when observed on the 20th of April. And what they do then is they dispose of the eggs. So they did, they did that. They are saying this is nothing alarming. This is what I would call recycling in nature. Their instincts kick in. Of course, it's sad for those who are watching, but it is something that is very normal with eagles. So nothing to worry about. This is the nature and the cycle of life. Thank you. And there is the DC, now the good news here. That is obviously here from DC6 and we should be up, uh, updating you next time on DC7. So you can see here something given by Jarlene Perry Nicom. Thank you very much. Isn't that beautiful? And some more pictures here from the American Eagle Foundation. Also from Janet. Quite remarkable. And some more. So you can see lots and lots going on there. Very interesting. And then you say, DC6 <laughs> biting his toes. Yes, well, that's that thing. It's like babies, they can stretch everywhere, can't they? And help. <laughs> that's a cute one. So you can see there's a lot going on here at the nest. Seven hours old, develop, uh, rapid developing. Watchers, look, here is DC6. Yes, all cleaned up. That was Jen. Thank you very much. And before we do that, let's jump into the national and international news on eagles right now. So the first news comes from Lucy County. Lucy County, if I remember correctly, where was Lucy? I just knew it a second ago, Lucy County. If someone knows where Lucy County is, I looked it up. But uh, what happened there was a, a, a sheriff there or the deputy um, uh, found an injured eagle and brought it in and now the eagle seems to be fine. It has a broken wing so they will look after it. So this is from St. Lucie County. Next news and this is stop showing these ads it's terrible always. Yes this is interesting so this is from uh, from New Jersey. Bald eagles find ho home in Neptune. What is interesting about this is there's a pair of eagles that are nesting in Shark Rivers Hills. I looked that up on the map. It's a very beautiful area, uh, you know, right next to the water. And they won't give up the exact location, but it's a big celebration for the eagles as, uh, and they, 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 you know, they, they go a little bit into the past here, how they were endangered and they're no more endangered. So this is a big joy for the community there. Very nice. Oh yes, and this is rather interesting. Now we come to some drones, um, all about drones. So let's listen to Chris Eberly talking about drones. I hope you can hear this. Chris Eberly, I'm the director of the Maryland Bird Conservation Partnership, and we are running the Maryland Bald Eagle Nest Monitoring Program. And we have nest monitors all over the state monitoring active eagle nests. Uh, currently 170 monitors, monitoring about 285 nests. Uh, one of the issues we're starting to see are some negative interactions with drones and eagles. And that's one thing I would like to try to get information out, uh, that drones uh, can actually be somewhat harmful to eagles. Uh, they can disturb them, uh, make them flush off the nest, uh, which might expose the eggs or young to uh, the cold right now that we're having or other weather conditions. The one thing I'd like to, to do is um, encourage drone users and people who know drone users uh, to use those in a very responsible way when they are anywhere in the vicinity of an eagle nest. Uh, we've had a couple of cases, one here in Anne Arundel County, uh, where a drone actually caused an eagle to flush off the nest while incubating eggs. Uh, and the other adult um, tried to defend the nest a little bit, but they both ended up flying away. Fortunately, uh, the next day they did come back. 
eagles perceive these drones as predators, as something new and unusual and a threat, and it causes stress to them, uh, which, is, which is not a good thing when we're trying to protect these eagles. So uh, please, if you have a drone, uh, we encourage you to fly that in an area that is not going to be uh, having an impact to any nesting eagles. And just be mindful of where you are and what encounters you may have with eagles or other birds, especially hawks, uh, other raptors, uh, and that you be considerate of them and watch if there's any reaction to your drone by these birds that you're most likely causing disturbance. And we don't want to have any eagles or hawks uh, abandon nests. So uh, we happy drone flying. Um, we don't want to discourage people from using drones. We just encourage you to use that. Okay, well, you can see what so a gentleman much. Chris is. Isn't that a very nice way of putting the news about drones? So, uh, drone users, please be responsible when you use drones. Absolutely correct. So, now we come to uh, some typical things that we observe when we look at eagle nests, and very often it is, can be very uh, stressful. I remember seeing exactly the identical scene here a few years ago in White Rock. And what they're talking about is parents that are still young and not so experienced. And this happened at the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources. And, and um, they left the egg for more than two hours. And in the meantime, a three-year-old, and it's very, it's very interesting, in White Rock it was also a three-year-old, came in and, um, yeah, I've actually got the footage right here, and started destroying the, uh, um, uh, started destroying the egg. Now this is very natural, this is nothing to be alarmed about. You also have to understand that the egg was very unlikely still viable because it is left alone for such a long period of time. The temperature has dropped below the critical temperature to keep uh, the, the egg viable. And well, then another eagle comes in and eats the egg. That's nature. At least it's recycling, it's not throwing away. So I always tend to see the positive side. I just also want to quickly greet all uh, who's just come in. I've just seen a few others. Uh, Lady Hawk is there. That's wonderful. I've seen Dana and a few others. So welcome to our broadcast. And if you haven't done so, please give us thumbs up. It helps us to know that this is what you appreciate because all this comes, these are contributions that we work for hours on to put them together, especially my team and all those kind people who contribute with the, with the news. So thank you very much. Next point. Next point, and here we, um, the next point is, oh, this is rather, <laughs> this is very interesting. Sorry about the ads uh, sometimes popping up. Um, very difficult to prevent, even if you have an ad blocker, simply because ad blockers are also uh, nasty. So, but this is in Port Orchard. It's very interesting because what happened here in Port Orchard is there was, um, yeah, th there was a, a couple and uh, they're called Overly Homes. Um, she had been looking at a nest and it started in 2011 when she was recovering from a neck surgery and then her husband uh, a few years later set up a, um, you, uh, a telescope with a webcam which is fairly easy to do. It's something I've also done and they have started to broadcast and this went viral in the meantime. So this is Tina Overly Holmes of Port Orchard follows the activity of an eagle family in her neighborhood. So this is their own camera from their balcony. Really wonderful. And they called one of them, they called Freedom, and they're doing exceptionally well. Uh, you, you can follow all the activity. I'm quickly going to go through the um, photos that they have there, looking outside, looking at the nest. They, she whistles a lot to them, follows them, and that's her husband here who is an IT expert following the nest with regular uh, passion and curiosity. So that's wonderful. If you haven't seen that one yet, look at this nest. The next news comes from Alaska. Yeah, Skagway News. And what happened there was there was um, an eagle that had been rescued, had a broken shoulder for one year, a broken shoulder, and had been at a raptor center uh, heavily injured 
and then was released again. So that's all good news and that is the happy moment of release. Here you can see Wu is set loose. That, that was the name that they gave the eagle by Robert Baines, longtime volunteer at the Raptor Center and Erica Pearson. Beautiful story, always nice to see. You can see the eagle has also been banded. And the next news here from Nebraska, and it's back to the old story. I've seen you talk about it in the chat already. It's all about lead poisoning again, and the horrific story of lead poisoning just goes on and on and on. Because uh, lead po the number of eagles that have been brought in by lead poisoning recently have been 18. Uh, that is uh, very alarming. Only this bird and one other could be saved. So a lot of birds are dying from lead poisoning because by the time they are, um, they are saved, the lead has taken tremendous toll on the eagle and often is not able to recover. In this case, it's a mature eagle, takes his first wing beat under free and open skies, uh, found with lead poisoning near Hampton in early March, and then was was released. So that is that is a good story. So that was in Nebraska, what just happened. And here, now we go to Tasmania. So we're going uh, Australia, New Zealand, you know there's a small island called Tasmania. And another worrying story here, BirdLife Tasmania warns wedge-tailed eagles could be pushed into extinction. What they mean is that there are some crazy people shooting at eagles absolutely unacceptable and terrible, but they say there's a raft of issues. It's threatening their population. We're seeing over time their population decreasing. Every single individual wedge-tailed eagle is precious. They also say that some of them seem to be, be um, killed by wind, uh, wind turbines, but they say uh, they've been poisoned too and others been shot. So those are the main contributors to uh, the, the decline of eagle wet, uh, or wedge-tailed eagles in Tasmania. And the next point, oh, this is exciting. Do you remember when Lady, uh, sorry, it, it was um, Osprey Mama. Yes, Osprey Mama is also there. Osprey Mama, you brought this up in our recent discussion about owls when we were, uh, when we were running that last Friday. And this was about the trio, two females and one male. Very interesting. I visited that website. It is absolutely astounding what's going on. This is about two great, uh, great horned owls to females, one older and one younger, who have a nest side by side. They have a nest side by side. They are co-parenting. And what is interesting is that the older, um, that the, the more mature great horned owl helped the younger female uh, um, when she was struggling with an egg actually to sit on the egg and wait till it hatched. Well, then the drama actually continued because this owl then left the nest prematurely, which is not uncommon for owls, by the way, nothing to worry about, and was then sitting on the ground. If you have not seen this wonderful story, here is the, um, here is the website and the live feed. I'm just going to put it right at the end so we get the moment at the, uh, let's get the right moment at the moment. So there you can see the Nevada Depot Wildlife. Uh, that is the live channel for the great horned owls uh, uh, um, breeding at the moment and um, obviously looking very well. A phenomenal story. Let's see how many people are watching at this moment. You can see the live comments going on there. Let me just push up here. Oh, 217 people. Yes, 217 people. So you can join the chat. Very interesting. Next news, this is the city of Kenai. If you didn't know, we did report in the beginning of the city of Kenai uh, that they have an eagle camp. If you haven't seen it, I did find it here. This is located in Alaska and uh, is part of a public-private uh, partnership involving residents of the city of Kenai. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Kenai, Kenai, I'm not quite sure. Um, but anyway, here it is. So you can look for this nest and there you can find the live channel. Uh, then finally, uh, there, was a, um, there was a pair of red-tailed hawks, a hurt eagle, that was brought into a rescue center. Uh, that was near the Interstate 80 and Route 251, and that was in Illinois. And uh, the good news is that one of them did survive, and is, uh, but unfortunately the other one didn't make it. 
so that is typically when they get too close to the roads that is something that can happen but we are happy to hear that one of them is making it and finally the news that has just come in this is really interesting i always have to think of david hancock here a uh, downtown developer wins permit to re remove peregrine nest. Now, I, I, this is always a big discussion. Developers will always win. They will always win. Uh, or we can say most of the times they will win. Um, what, is re what is important to do then is what, why, why I find David Hancock's contribution from the Hancock Wildlife Foundation so important. You get a biologist in and make sure that the nest is relocated properly so that you preserve the number of nests and raptors. In this case, what happened was is absolutely crazy. I'm sorry, I have to say. Um, this nest was removed because uh, the company spokesman says that the workers were harassed by the birds. And of course, this is, this, uh, the, this is dis disputed. Probably the truth lies somewhere in between. Um, you know, that, that there was something going on, but it was also easier for them to remove it. My question to this is always, when you remove it, you always need to, whatever you destroy, you need to create again. And that is the main part that I learned from David Hancock. So I think biologists need to be involved in this to relocate the nest. I could not see that any such effort was making, was, uh, was being made. Uh, so that is not very good. It's not enough just to... Um, but it's often here to pay for all costs for those chicks to be transferred. So it's all about the transfer and that is important. So I'm not sure what the story here is, but I do hope that they do make a proper transfer. And if they do, do I think it's fine. Right, so that is the, uh, that is the latest news. You just quickly saw my Gmail there from uh, Lady Hawk. I'm trying to keep up to date everywhere. So now let's get going here. Ah, and this is, uh, let's see, where are we? Yes, this is Smoky Mountain Bald Eagle Nest. Yes. So we are here, Lady, uh, yeah, uh, Nest of Lady Independent and Sir Hatcher 2. And this is, uh, uh, this is uh, in Tennessee, the third week. And you can see these three are doing very well. We're just flipping through it very quickly. Wonderful nest. Thank you for the contribution here by Cheryl. Cheryl I N D or is it Cheryl Cheryl Envy, sorry, it's Cheryl Envy, I beg your pardon. So that all happened very recently. You can see the little chicks are doing very well. Oops. <laughs> so I'm just going to let you enjoy this. Turn down the volume. Okay, we can do that. Do that. Okay, there we go. I just switched off the volume there. Thank you for the feedback, Nicole. So that should be better now. So anyway, um, for those of you who haven't heard, heard this is from Cheryl uh, um, and V, who's just given this contribution about Smoky Mountain Bald Eagle Nest, and um, looks very well. Oh, there is a lot. There is so much going on. Just a few more seconds for you to enjoy. So the third weeks, they you can see how tremendous. You remember the 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 uh, talk that I gave uh, that uh, third fourth week comes their their maximum rate of increase in weight, and that's going to happen very soon at this nest. Very interesting. Thank you for that contribution. And now we come to the next nest by Birdbrain56 on her Facebook page, American Eagle Foundation. Uh, let me just see if I turn the volume down so it won't be too loud. I'm just going to turn the volume off here. Uh, so this is uh, at the Sevier County, sorry, Sevier, I'm not quite sure how that's pronounced, Sevier County Animal Clinic uh, at the University of Tennessee. They rescued, you may have seen, now you're going to see this in super fast motion. We talked about this last week, Smoky Mountain Eagle Cam, you can remember. Now you're going to see them speed up there, what they do. Really important, I've been on rescues with David Hancock and Eagle Captures. You cover them with a blanket because it really calms down raptors tremendously. What they did find really important was some fishing lines. We reported on it last week and and one of them had it in its mouth. So obviously uh, in its stomach was quite severe. They brought it in, did an x-ray then, 
and found the hook in its stomach and uh, and did manage to pull it out under uh, anest uh, yeah. Uh, after after uh, anest anesthetics, and they put it back up. Now you can see them rushing up uh, with tremendous speed. Look at that climb here. It's of course all in very fast motion, and then put put the eaglet back so that the triplets are fine. So it got reunited and everything was fine. Really tremendous job. You can see how important it is now. It's not only the the um, the mo monitoring of the uh, of 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 the um, eagle through the cameras but it is it is more important important to take action as in this video very well done and now everything is back to normal the family is back to normal but that is another major menace so we have lead poisoning that is a major menace and then we we also have the fishing lines which we see all too often a really bad indicators i think next one here now we go to uh, the, yes, the DC nest. We just reported on the DC nest that there's a pip on DC-7. Uh, so this is the president and the first lady. Uh, so what happened here was they were sitting here on the nest and it was uh, Mr. President sitting on, on that and suddenly there was some cause for alarm because a young female came in. And that can be very threatening, whether it's a male or female doesn't matter. But as soon as intruders come in, we've seen that time and again. It is really important to watch out. And Dad, Mr. President, did a good job here to fight off uh, any intruder. So here we go. I just turned down the volume. I'm not sure how loud the volume is, but I'm just going to turn it off here too. So you can just see it there is the a young a young female you can see that about five year old five six year old or four or five somewhere around there and you can see dad uh, mr president doing a very good job complaining and making sure that he's going to fight this off for several hours yes music again dana i saw that i will i will um uh, thank you for the comment i will switch um, yeah, we just have to say this to my team, please make sure that the videos don't have sound unless they're meant to, so that, uh, you know, we do that. Well, anyway, the, my team does a great, uh, you know, a great job, so occasionally tiny mistakes like this happen, so forgive them. Okay, but anyway, you can see everything's well, very well chased off and the nest is right back to normal. Really fantastic. There we go. Thank you very much from Bald Eagles Naturally. Very nice. Next video. And this is, oh, this is the, oh, this is peregrine. Oh, yes, this is a, this is a very nice one. It's a, pereg uh, a peregrine nest. Isn't that beautiful? Welcome, second ayahs. Video by, by K. Gnarly. Oh, one, two, three. I hope I got your pronunciation correctly. The peregrines welcome the second hash of the day. Watch uh, for the love taps uh, for the first and the second one hatched. One more egg to hatch and this family will be complete. So it's going very well. Very nice to see something different, to see a peregrine falcon nest. So do look at that one. The location is the Anacapa peregrine. So just Google Anacapa Kappa peregrines and you will have it. I mean, you, as you know, peregrine falcons are so incredible. Uh, they, you, you know that they have this incredible ability to dive and to spiral down. So, <laughs> watch a little tap on their heads. Okay, then watch that. Slow motion again, that's a tap. Yep, <laughs> that was clear. <laughs> very nicely done, very nice, nicely compiled. So by, K, I don't know what is it, K Gnarly, I'm sorry, off my, I, I have difficulties to know how to pronounce uh, all, all that. But, but thank you anyway for your beautiful contribution.
Oh, and it's back to the berry nest. You remember B10 last week had to learn how to behave? <laughs> well, this time B10 is surprised by a great blue heron. Again, I've seen that also in White Rock. A blue herons coming in, just sitting on top of the nest, actually doing nothing, just sitting there, right? Uh, very interesting, by the way, because obviously they realize that the eaglets are not a threat to them, would be very different with bald eagles, right? Uh, there's a very interesting symbiosis between, uh, between the great blue heron and, the, uh, and eagles, as you may know. It's a sort of a dancing with the devil. There's a very nice video, by the way, on, on Vimeo about uh, a nice 10-minute documentary that you shouldn't miss. Just um, Google dancing with the devil. Very nice. Okay, I just switched off the audio there. Anyway, really beautiful contribution. Thank you, Jenny, for that. Thank you, beautiful contribution. That was from the berry nest. And now the food fight, you all. You remember the food fight, right? Let me switch off the um, sound here one second. Okay, well, um, B10 is obviously getting more assertive and that is to be expected, more aggressive. Uh, the moment where, where they st really start becoming a danger to their parents is the moment when the parents leave the nest. Uh, and uh, we've seen that time and again in many nests. So their B10 is finally getting aggressive. Well, that is the natural uh, behavior that they need to survive. I mean, especially if you don't have a sibling, as you remember, B11 fell out of the nest. Anyway, doing very well. So thank you. That was again from Jenny. Thank you for that contribution. Oh yes, and now we come still. We're still at the berry nest, and this is by Alan Scott, the B3 bar branch buddies. And you can see this is Mama Berry this morning. Isn't that marvelous that we can update you so quickly with news here? That is beautiful. And I just want to quickly welcome all the all these who've just come in. Do give us a thumbs up. I can see Ella Track. Very nice to see you, Tracy. Uh, Kathy Newton has come in. Margaret, Wanda, and so on. Carrie has come in. Thank you for joining us. And um, don't forget to give us thumbs up. It matters a lot to us because this is all voluntary. So this is another one by Alan Scott. Uh, yes, dad bear. I have never seen one uh, uh, bringing in a coot. Isn't that interesting? So coot obviously is a water bird, right? And bringing, bringing one in here. And here again, here taken by Louise Rando. Also very recently, um, uh, it says, Ma Berry, look out below. Yeah, well, this brings me to a famous story. This, this is exactly what happened to me with two eaglets at the White Rock Nest. Uh, I came in way, very early one day, it was about two years ago, to take some, to do a live broadcast. And um, something hit me from above, right? And well, it was some white stuff. Well, you can imagine what it was. It was exactly a poop stream. And I thought it was fine. And I thought, my goodness, it's a bit cold. So I, I, I thought I washed everything off. And I went to Starbucks and everybody was staring at me. I had no idea. And then I went to the bathroom and I was covered. My whole face was white, basically. And then I understood, um, you know, you really have to watch this out and you have to wash yourself really properly. Okay, next one here again from the berry nest. And that's here. That is from Yoko Fujiwara. Bita, B10 and Ma look very happy in the screenshot they do. The sh shot they do, sorry. But a little later, B10 started to bite Ma. Well, that is very common. They have a temper and they should have a temper. And here's Sasha. There's Nicole, B10, winger sizing, good exercise, and another one. Yes, 72 days and we, will, we should see the fledge very soon to come. And now we come to Stormy. That is the interesting update. Stormy, do you remember the story of, of, of uh, Stormy at the Big Bear Valley? Big Bear Valley has the most, is the most, probably is, in my opinion, the most dramatic nest of uh, probably gets the, uh, I don't know, ask, let's ask our experts. If you had to vote for the most dramatic eagle nest 
I would vote this as number one for, for 2018. They have had an incredibly difficult winter. It just went on and on. And um, they lost, uh, yeah, they lost one of the, uh, the chicks and then Stormy fell out of the nest. And the latest, I just saw that a few minutes ago from Lady Hawk. A photographer was there at the moment, uh, was there this morning. Um, they heard, they heard Stormy, but then they didn't see or uh, see Stormy anymore. Now that's not necessarily bad. I know it's alarming for people who are there but it's not as alarming as you may think it is because it could very well be that Stormy is just wandering off, obviously fledged successfully and um, is likely to come back. The parents would be very aware of them, uh, aware of, of Stormy's location and would be likely giving Stormy some food. And that's just the history that I've just told you about hypothermia. That was the story we had several weeks ago about um, little triple B that passed away in hypothermia. But fortunately, um, Stormy seems to be in good condition and we will keep on looking. Thank you very much, by the way, for some donation. That is Osprey Mama. You are very kind. This is very helpful. All donations help us. And do give us thumbs up if you can't donate, don't want to donate. That is fine, I understand. But do give us a thumbs up. It's just a click. And that click matters so much. All the volunteers working on this, all the effort that goes in, it just means a lot to us. It really does. So do give us a thumbs up. Thank you so much. Okay, so that is a story here that's just Lollaboo. Lollaboo, I think, is also with us tonight. Um, put in this incredible um, update here on Stormy. So thank you for putting that in Lollaboo 2. I always forget this, Lollaboo 2.2. Two. That's probably Lollaboo 2.2. Two. And this is just insane. Talking about the, the nest, the most dramatic nest Big Bear Valley uh, Eagle's Nest here. Look at the weatherman. This is insane. This is taken on um, that. That was, yes, that was the 2nd of May. Is that correct? Is that correct? That can't be. That can't be. Am I reading this correctly? Is the, maybe someone can just jump in here. When they say May 2nd, is it 2nd of, is it the 5th of February or is this the 2nd of May? If I understand correctly, this is the 2nd of May and that is insane weather. If anybody wants to comment on this, uh, please. Yes, it is today. Nicole is saying it is today. That is incredible. I mean, this is the most dramatic nest I've ever seen. It's crazy, isn't it? Okay, and now you remember the Edsel Johnson City Nest. This is MSO who is also with us today. Two siblings who want to take you, who, yeah, this is about the fish. Well, if you're a triplet, watch this swallow. Isn't that incredible? <laughs> now you try and do that, right? Now this little chick is not even three months old and look, look what it's already doing. <laughs> I love it. Thank you, MSO, for that beautiful contribution. And now another one, the Dale Hollow Nest, of course. Here we go. And now we see a red-tailed hawk coming in. So you're going to see a red-tailed hawk just coming in. Just switching off the sound. Um, so sitting there on the left, you can see the red-tailed hawk, but the eagle is obviously uh, defending it. Now it's very interesting. There comes one of the adults in. That's mum in this case, bringing in a fish. And that's the moment red-tailed hawk uh, takes off. What I find fascinating about this is that the red-tailed hawk obviously understands what an eaglet is and that it poses no danger whatsoever and what an adult does. So the awareness that you have in, in nature is just so incredible. Thank you for that contribution, MSO. Really educational. Beautifully done. And now the famous decora. That's another dramatic nest. Uh, the disappearing dad and another male that has come in. Also look at that. That is on the 26th. Uh, that was from Bella Moon, yeah, Bella Moon Nature. Bella Moon Nature, thank you for that contribution. Um, so that was on the 26th, so that was about a week ago. And you can see um, uh, the, everything's still going fine. If there are any updates on the Decora Nest, please put them into the chat. Anybody who knows the latest, just let me know. So just as we learned that it snows today, still on the Big Bear Nest, uh, if there's any update that you have on the decora nest, whether it's still going fine because these eaglets are 
growing hungrier and bigger by the day. So it would be very interesting to see how Ma is actually coping with this, right? So do put in some comments. Your comments are always welcome and they will, will certainly be added. Thank you. Next one here, uh, entire video. Oh, this is by, by Jan, oh, no, how do you pronounce that? Janton or Jantoon? I'm not sure, Janton. <laughs> entire video of the gentle gathering and returning of the eagles to the Fraser Point Nest Santa Cruz. So we're once again, this is our friend, Dr. Peter Sharp from the Institute of Wildlife Studies. Remember when, remember when I interviewed him? Very knowledgeable person going to the nest um, together with, and I forgot who the partner was, but we'll have that in a moment. So what they did here is they did banding and what did they find? And also Lady Hawk uh, contributed on that. Thank you very much for bringing in the news just two hours ago. Lady Hawk sent some further pictures on, on from the banding. They did find a fish hook, which um, will be shown in a second. So you can see they're taking them down for banding. And um, Yep, that's, look how, uh, did you see how, um, uh, you know, how he catches the, uh, the, the eaglet? Uh, pu pushing it down, which is really important, catching the legs, pushing it down, and then it's completely calm, you see? So that is, uh, looks easy, but it is not easy to, to, to do this correctly, right? Many would intuitively uh, do it wrong, but he does it you can see how much experience he has with this. Let's put the volume down. So that is captured at Eagle, yes, at Fraser Eagle Point. And now the next one, oh, that is the Minnesota bound eagles. Yes, M17 arranges dad's grass. That is really funny. Well, they learn very quickly from their parents. So what you're going to see here is M17 is 31 days old. Thank you for that information. M18, 29 years, uh, sorry, 29 days old. And you can see how um, this little one, M17, is going to, um, <laughs> is going to rearrange, start. So obviously very tidy is, is uh, learning how to rearrange the nest, but I think they are going to so soon be very untidy when they get bigger and start completely taking the nest apart. That's what they do. <laughs> they use it as a trampoline. So at the moment, obviously being very tidy, let's see what happens later when they grow. That is beautiful. I have not seen uh, anything like this before. So a beautiful recording here on the 27th of April. Okay, so so good for the Minnesota bound nest. And here we go to Hayes, Eagle from the Facebook Friends of Hayes. Yeah, looking straight at the camera, a little bit difficult to see, but if you look carefully on the left, you can see him looking straight up to, to the camera. The screenshot is not as clear, but you can definitely see what, what this is about. And this is from the same Facebook page. That's a beautiful picture here. Um, that is... Uh, uh, Wait, it eagles of, of Hayes, yeah, Hayes, uh, it looked like pa, no, but it means Pennsylvania, of course. That's what, that's, uh, that's what it meant, female, okay, <laughs> that's what it meant. And this is a beautiful one here, um, uh, taken here, again, of the male coming in with a fish to the nest. Thank you for that contribution. Ah, uh, and now we jump a little bit back again. This is to, to Dr. Sharp showing that, the, that he's removing the fishing line, right? So you can see how many fishing lines. Again, this is so alarming, the number of fishing lines that are being caught. You can see he's carrying a camera on top and showing the straight alive that there's a fishing line that is being removed. That is why it's so important that they are up there helping the eaglets. And this is uh, doing, they did all the banding there and waiting for mom and dad then to return. Beautiful pictures, thank you. And Lady Hawk, by the way, sent very similar pictures. Thank you for all your contributions. Oh, uh, Lady Hawk's just saying, this is Nate. Thank you very much. I got it. I got it, Lady Hawk. Thank you. So that is not, that is not Dr. Sharp. I could not see it. Yep. Thank you I, uh, for that correction. I am reading your comments. 
So that is Nate, that's not Dr. Sharp. Okay, good, thanks for that comment. And there they are three, all three in again, thank you. So we saw that was Nate showing the fishing line and it's Dr. Sh so just to get the clothes right. So Nate is uh, obviously in the gray or brownish uh, shirt here while Dr. Sharp, uh, if I see it correctly, is in the blue unless they have changed clothes in the meantime. I hope I see this correctly. <laughs> so thanks for that correction. Okay, next one here. So, oh, now, I mean, the drama in that nest is also second to none. This is an owl attack and an owl coming in five times of all things within two hours. So just have a look how fierce that owl attack is. No rest here for the nest. You can see that was a long night. That was number two and it goes on. There comes number, strike number three. Oh, that's a horrible one. Always from the same side, right? It leaves me again with the questions. Are all seeing the night vision camera here? You know, uh, night vision light. Are they seeing it? That's, that's attack number four coming in. Really nasty. Ah, and Lady Hawk is just saying, so Dana, Dr. Sharp removed them from the sauces and Nate went up and put them back. There we go. Thank you. So one removed them, one put it back. Thanks for, the, for that correction, Lady Hawk. Very good. Oh my goodness. Now you see it all in slow motion. This is horrible, right? This is number two and you can see, see all these horrific owl attacks there going on. And that wasn't all at, that happened at the nest. The drama went on. So I'm just going to skip that now because I think you believe me. It was horrific. But the eaglets were on mouse patrol. And I haven't seen a video like this before. Look carefully uh, at any movement. You can see, if you look very carefully, you can see there, there are mice running around, obviously going for the food and feeling very much at home in the nest. And so the eaglets are obviously not happy with that and um, defending the nest. There comes an arrow. You can see the arrow and the, the mice and you can definitely see that this is very disturbing for them. So that is mouse trouble. So you had an owl strike. You had, uh, you, my, my goodness, there's, there was so much going on that night. Well, that's how they learn. And if the mice are not careful, they're going to turn into food. There comes another one. What a drama and another error. Watch that one. But you can see how good these night vision cameras are. Well, so thank you for that was Jan Ton again with that contribution. Thank you so much for that contribution. And now we come to the next one. This is Skidaway Osprey Nest. Chick number two passed away. We are sad to report that the youngest Osprey chick died today. This is just news that came in. So I'm seeing this for the first time. I didn't even have to read this because we corrected this just a few minutes before the show. This morning, May 2nd, after several hours of inactivity in the nest bowl, bowl sorry, the youngest Osprey chick appears to have died. Ultimately, the cause of death is unknown. However, it is most likely that chick uh, um, succumbed to lack of access of food or injuries. Uh, and um, sibling aggression, well, that aggression is part of raptors. Uh, and that is from the Cornell Lab of, uh, of Ornithology. While it's unfortunate to witness that, nest mortality is not uncommon. It's always important that they explain this so you can read it on and the other chick is doing very well. But that's just the way it works in the nest. So it is a very normal development with raptors. And the Southwest Florida Eagle Nest. Now we come to, remember when I was at the Southwest Florida Eagle Nest in February, it was fantastic, Northeast, Southwest. I broadcast live from there. So these are growing so rapidly, says, and here is something from Marty Lord from her face, Facebook page. Thank you for putting this picture in. It's really beautiful. So they're doing very well, as you can see. And another one here, M15. There's another beautiful picture from M15. And Lullaboo 2 again. Here the trio. Now we go to the trio nest. The trio nest is so fascinating. You may know that one eaglet didn't make it there. That was eaglet number two. But eaglet number one is doing fine and looked after by 
two dads and a mom. Isn't that amazing? So you can see that that is the upper Mississippi River National Wildlife and Fish Refuge. Beautiful nest. Also really the only camera that we have on two males and one female. There's one other one on two females and a male in California, as you may recall. But I haven't seen any, any update from that nest, by the way. But you can see it's doing, it's doing very well, being well, very well looked after. Right, and let's go on. This is also from the Stewart's Upper Sip, uh, this is the trio nest again. While Star excavates, Eagle observes and practices his yoga pose. <laughs> well, they certainly are flexible. And another one from, from the same nest. Hanging out with two dads. There you are, two dads. Aren't you lucky? One sib one only one eaglet with two dads. Isn't that incredible? That is such a remarkable story. And now is Pacific Northwest Kate here. You remember when she was here? She's got a remarkable contribution of a great horned owl here from British Columbia, our area. And you can see a little owlet. This is remarkable. She is so incredible, courageous. She uh, is monitoring wildlife around here everywhere and you can see the owlet is grooming and, f and feeding the little, uh, the, the little owl. Isn't that absolutely marvelous? It's a parliament of owls. <laughs> Maybe you can call two a parliament already but I love the word a parliament of owls. <laughs> you can see how well they take care. They are taking care of the little one. Very nice to see that. Very nice contribution from Pacific North uh, West K. Thank you for that. Beautiful. I'm just going to let you look at it. It's still, um, still about half a minute, but it's an incredible contribution here. <laughs> Quite incredible. Well, those are just beautiful pictures, really beautiful, Be beautiful footage. Yes, thank you to Pacific Northwest, Kate. Okay, and now we come to Chickadee. 64 Prophet Porch Eagle Nest in Columbus. There's no camera there. So this is interesting. If you ever want to have a place where you can eat very well, there's a restaurant apparently here where you can have gumbo seafood and sandwiches and you look up at the nest and um, obviously taken from the ground because there's no camera here and you can watch there. There's an eagle nest and what a great place to watch eagles fly in and out. Isn't that wonderful if you can dine and enjoy that. That is like being in paradise. There's a trail in the back of the restaurant which leads to the nest tree. Absolutely marvelous. Oh my goodness, if I would be running this, uh, uh, this restaurant, they, you know, I would be talking non-stop and I would be putting a big camera up so you could watch this live in the restaurant. I'm just throwing some ideas out here because it's absolutely marvelous to have that. And another one from Chickadee. This is, this is, um, the same nest again, East Columbus on the 6th of April. So that was some time ago and you can see the little head there popping out. Just a short one. So obviously that, uh, <laughs> obviously a lot bigger now. That was nearly a whole month ago. Oh my goodness, what a long tree in the middle of nowhere. Very nice. Thank you Chickadee64. And now by Tim. Uh, the Greenfield Eagle Watch, I, uh, oh, that is, here we have the location. Thank you, um, Nicole, for adding that. That is in Pendleton, Indiana. I didn't know where that was, but if you didn't know where this nest was, Greenfield Eagle Watch. So I got a few shots of one of the eagles poking its head up in the evening. Again, there are so many nests. Um, so if, if ground observers come in with special, uh, you know, with special footage, just send it to us. Thank you for sending so much beautiful um, you, you know, just so much here. And here's another one posted on Facebook with Cleveland Metro Parks. Just happened yesterday, the, the Rocky River Reservation Bald Eagle Pair is, is very busy raising triplets. Oh, another triplet. So that is fine. 
Raising very fast is very demanding. Both male and female parents devote most of their energy protecting the young from predators. Absolutely. And we've seen that time and again. Can you imagine what the decora nest is about? My goodness. So, yeah. I didn't know if there were any updates on the decora nest, by the way. Uh, if, I, if, if there are, I haven't seen them. So, just let us know. So, photos by Tom Fishburn, uh, Fishburn sorry. a naturalist. Thank you very much. And this is the first hatch. Now, this is funny. This is a, gla a great blue heron cam. Now, you can see the, the, this blue heron is so big, you can never get everything there. You just see the legs. <laughs> so, you can see the first hatch. Beautifully, to, beautiful to see. I think I'm counting one, two, three, four, maybe even more eggs. I'm not sure. But um, you see these long legs. And we should be seeing a hatch there. Yes, we do on the left side. That, is, that must be egg number five, right? Or well, the first of, of five eggs. Uh, just hatching beautifully there. Yeah. And obviously, the parent taking the shells away. Very nice to see. Beautiful footage. That's the first here on, on, on this channel. We have not seen anything like that. So, beautiful to see. Again, the symbiosis between the blue heron and the eagles is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, eagles are not what many thought a threat to blue herons. They live uh, side by side and have adapted very well in nature and seem to be benefiting from each other. Very nice to see. Well, thank you, thank you for that beautiful footage. That's it. Oh, here we are at the end already. Talented Talents 360 team. Susie, thank you to Susie Q, Jenny, Bella Donna. I haven't seen Bella Donna today. She's probably busy, but I've seen the rest. Sasha, I've seen Su Susie and Jenny, certainly. I think Jenny is, yeah, Jenny is there too. Yes, I just saw that. Very good. So I'm just going to just jump in quickly. Fantastic, fantastic. Thank you so much, my friends, for, for all the beautiful contributions that you've given us. Uh, that is what, what makes this channel go. Thank you for, again, to Osprey Mama for, for donating some funds. And if you, if you do want to take part in, um, and I'm just going to show this quickly, the page, the, my, my Patreon, uh, that helps us a lot. The Patreon channel, one second, is where you can get, for only $2 contribution, per month. Just look on Patreon uh, forward slash Zasafoto. You get beautiful pictures and very special uh, and, 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 and very special media footage. I do very special uh, behind the camera scenes there that you don't get usually. I put a lot of effort into keeping the Patreons happy together with my team. So even just two dollars helps us. It's two dollars per month and you get a beautiful National Geographic type of, of image. So so if you if you feel like contributing, that is very much appreciated. Other than that, please give us thumbs up and thank you so much. So I wish you a, a wonderful week and see you on Friday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you to all of you. And we'll have some live raptors from a raptor center, quite a few different raptors. Again, thanks for Nicole for organizing that. I think it's going to be great. So don't miss out on Friday. Come in with lots of questions. We're going to ask quiz, quiz, quizzes again to keep you updated and to really make this enjoyable to all of you. Very good. Well, on that note, thank you for, for, for being with us and enjoy the summer. Take your shirts off and be happy. Bye-bye.